Hi there and welcome back to this European Schoolnet Academy Games and Schools course. This is module 5 where we're talking about designing games um, and in this video we're going to be talking about why game design is important in schools. Um, and the truth of it is that game design I think is important in schools for, for two reasons. Um, one of the reasons is that when we think about future economies uh, we know that in many parts of Europe, the games design industry is thriving. But what people tell us is they cannot get enough games designers and coders and people with the digital skills to be able to support the industry. So there are economic reasons for this as well. Um, but the other reason is because I really think that if we introduce games design to schools, we can challenge the notion that young people are consumers of the internet and consumers of digital technology and actually they become creators of digital technology they become creators not consumers and in a society where we know moving forward we need more young people to be creative the only way that we're going to get more people to be creative is if they create things and that can be done in a hands-on non-digital way but also I believe it can be done in a digital way as well we can get young people to develop their creativity skills by actually creating digital content and games give us an ideal opportunity to be able to do that. The important thing for me about games design is that if we're really thinking about introducing this into our schools, it shouldn't be as simple as when you get to a certain age, you're entitled to do games design. Games design and the skills associated with games design, from coding to storytelling to character development, <clears throat> to graphics, all of these things should be done in a progressive way. And the most progressive school systems around the world in terms of digital technologies, particularly to do with games design, have started to introduce games design progression frameworks, where young people are entitled to be able to build digital games as part of their learning, and they're able to do this from a very young age all the way from when they graduate from high school. And I would challenge you to think about that within your own school and your own school setting. The other interesting thing about games design is it can really provide a bit of a hook to link into other areas of the curriculum. And successful games design can actually be used as an assessment agent in itself. For example, if you were doing a unit on a history topic, producing a game at the end of that unit which demonstrates your learning about history could again be a worthy thing to do in its own right. But because the young people know they're going to be making the game at the end of the unit, then that becomes you know, something that motivates them to link the learning together um, as they progress through the history unit, knowing that they're going to be making that game at the end of it, and knowing that that game is going to need to con contain you know, historical facts and figures um, as part of the gameplay. Games design also gives us an amazing opportunity in schools to work in a cross-curricular way. Um, if you think about it, um, games have got amazing characters in them, characters that have been part of our families for generations. If you look at the silhouettes on the screen now, I'm sure that you recognise right, some of these different characters, and these have all come you know, from different games, and yes, they may have been made into movies, but ultimately these are games design characters. And my point here is that when we think about game design, it's not just about the coding, it's also about the, the character development, and it's also about the stories and the evolution of these characters over time. And of course, if we're thinking about uh, different characters, these characters are going to have to have the stories, but they're also going to have to have the scenery, and if we want to have really good game mechanics in there, we're going to need some kind of variables in terms of physics engines. And then I suppose... If we really want our game to be successful, then we need to brand our game and package our game and market our game, which provides all kinds of you know, interesting links for enterprise. So games and computer games can be used in a really powerful cross-curricular way. So just a quick introduction as to why I think games are important in the classroom. I think there's economic and employability reasons. But importantly, I think it really does help young people develop their creative potential in a cross-curricular way. And it's a way of linking departments together within schools. So here's a thought piece for you. What I want you to think about before you 
watch the next video, is in your opinion, what are the top three components of a good computer game? In your opinion, what are the top three components of a good computer game? Look forward to seeing you in the next video where we're going to be talking about some very, very simple game design tools. And don't forget to use the hashtag GamesCourse to bind the conversation together.